Welcome to the second Wednesday of Advent. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and, to, and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up. Every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers. The flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Get you up on a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arms rule for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and will carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The meditation of the day comes from Stephen McCutcheon. He writes, The people of Israel have been taken into exile. Everything that they had held on to as a sign of their special identity, their land, temple, and king, had been taken away from them. Now the prophet is called to speak words of comfort to a despairing people. In the wilderness, in the time of exile, they are told to prepare the way of the Lord. When they are commanded to cry out that the Lord is coming, they respond in despair that all flesh is like grass and soon withers under the sun. There is no hope that new leaders will rise up and lead them. Their cynicism is overwhelming. Like today, when people have lost all confidence in politicians and religious leaders and despair that all people are selfish and self-serving, so Israel has all lost hope. The prophet challenges that despair not by denying the weakness of humans, but by proclaiming the power of God. The light in the darkness is not some new scheme of reform or some champion of the people, but the truth that God cares for us is like a shepherd for his flock. As you reflect on your own life, where there are points of despair, where are you looking for help? What does it mean for you to trust that God cares for you in your particular situation? He reflects in Mark 1 through 3, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, McCutcheon says. A member admits to me that he does not like Advent because he tries to make a mystery out of something that he already knows. He wants to go right into the celebration and skip the preparation. But what he celebrates is the past event. Mark suggests that the kingdom of God is knocking at this member's door, waiting for him to experience the baptism of repentance so that he can be prepared to receive this new thing. Advent is a difficult season for many of us because we want to blur the season into Christmas. The liturgical calendar does not make sense to us because we really are not preparing for a surprise. We think that we already know the end of the story. And more importantly, we do not believe that anything different will happen this year. It's hard to prepare the way of the Lord when you do not expect the Lord to come. But what if this year God is about to act decisively and we miss it altogether because we weren't willing to be prepared? What if Advent only rehearses the past event to illuminate how we are to discern the sign of these times? What would take place if Christians prepare for God's coming to us fully expecting 
that this may happen. Let's pray. Stir up your hearts, O Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.